Hello. Can anybody hear me out there? Hello? Hey, what's up guys? How's everybody doing today? Can you guys uh, hear me out there? Let me know if it's uh, too low. I was having some issues with my uh, headset mi uh, headset uh, mic, so I'm using the an external mic. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Hey, how you doing? From Egypt, huh? Awesome. My mound, that's awesome. Cool, very cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for confirming that uh, you can hear me on Facebook. So we'll get started real soon. A couple more minutes. Hey, how's it going, Alex? George? How's everybody doing? Okay, awesome. Thanks for confirming the YouTube. Uh, you can hear me. We just need uh, Twitch and uh, there's one more platform uh, that we need to confirm. But we should get, we should be good in a couple minutes. You guys can hear the music okay? It's not too loud. How's everybody's weekend? Thanks for confirming about the music. I just want to make sure it's not too high. Let's see. Great weekend, yeah, that's awesome. That's great, especially with the holidays coming up. You know, it's uh, getting into lazy mode. I've, I've been a little bit lazy, but uh, last night I um, wanted to work on. I, I just watched the, the movie Krampus, and I wanted to do a, a creature design on that, and you know, maybe something for the stream. But decided to continue working on this guy just for an hour or two. So we'll be going over some of those changes to, today. Uh, so one of the main things that I decided to do with this, um, actually before we continue, let's do a little bit of an intro of who I am and what I do. Uh, so here's my website at MagVFX. This is the kind of work that I do professionally. Uh, I currently work in tech, not so much in films anymore and commercials. Uh, but here's some of my past work. Uh, I've been a character supervisor. Uh, so here's some of the type of work I've done in films and commercials. And if you guys want to check that out, uh, music videos. Also, here's some of the stuff that I do on the side just for fun, uh, the kind of stuff we're covering uh, on the stream. So just kind of my own personal collectibles that I do for events like Monster Palooza, Designer Con, 
Bite Box Expo, that type of stuff. So feel free to check it out at labestestudio.com or Big Cartel. Um, here's my Instagram. If you guys want to give me a follow, check out some of the stuff that I've been working on. I do, I post a lot of stuff here that I don't post on my website or anything like that. And if you guys want my interface, uh, feel free to come down to um, Gumroad. That would give you all my shaders, uh, tool layout, and all that, all that type of stuff. So if you guys want to follow along while we're streaming, you guys can. Or you guys could strip out stuff that you guys like from this interface or not. Um, and here's my art station, uh, which I need to update. But here it is in case you guys want to follow me there. Awesome. So now that we got that out of the way, let's... Uh, Let's pay some links for the people that want to uh, download the Gumroad stuff. So here's a few links. Uh, if you guys want to uh, follow me or, or download my interface, uh, feel free. I'll be posting these periodically to the stream. Let's see. So what are we going to do today? Today we're going to talk about some of the updates that I did so here's kind of what we had um, last two weeks ago so you know this is um, this we started this last stream or the stream before that um, which I it felt like it was going in a good direction you know it felt like the design was kind of getting there we started blocking out his enemy just blocking out the head which will do more work on today uh, but one thing that I felt after thinking about it uh, last night was that I didn't want to feel like he went and just bought his um, samurai suit somewhere, you know? Like, it was custom tailored to him, but it was still man-made, or it was still, like, manufactured type of deal. So, one thing I started changing around is uh, making it feel like it's actually more... Uh, like, a lot of the shells or a lot of things that are protecting him are actually part of other insects. Like, other... Let's say, like, he fought, like, a bigger insect, and he's, he could steal part of his his skull or part of his armor he could like repurpose it um and i felt like that was a little bit of kind of what i wanted to do and here's we haven't worked too much on the back which we probably work, will today but uh, a lot of these things that were kind of like uh more samurai like um like you know like little details i decided to change it to make it feel like they're actually part more of his of, of like an insect like you know so i added some horns at the bottom, which we could, we're probably going to play around with today and see if they actually work. But uh, these guys, these little antenna kind of guys, I wanted to still keep that from the samurai look, but not make it so obvious that it's like samurai-like. I feel like it wanted to be part of his, his growth. Like his, like either grew out of him or he just took it from another insect he fought, you know? What do you guys think about that? Uh, the other thing too is like the shoulder pads kind of made him more like organic. Trying to make these uh, neck pads a little more organic as well. So that's kind of what we're playing around with today. And we also started doing some test renders, which uh, let me open up. We're doing some test renders in Arnold, so I'll open that up too so you guys can see kind of what I was talking about and, you know, kind of experimenting with seeing what it looks like with a real HDRI, real lighting. To see if it's starting to feel real, if it feels like some stuff is uh, an illusion of some of the shaders that we're looking at here. Like one big thing that I'm just kind of looking at now that kind of bothers me is uh, the depth of the cheek. Underneath the cheek, like the jaw part, like something feels off about that. So I'm probably going to go back and touch that up now. Uh, one thing I started doing with this guy that, that was kind of interesting, uh, kind of started changing his face around. So I kind of... Uh, I decided to open it and see what he would look like if he had a uh, teeth or if he had like an open mouth, which it was kind of working. Yeah, I look back and I, I like his manner when he, he looks much more mean with his mouth closed, it's like he loses some of that element. So I think I'm probably going to go back. Uh, let's see, let me open up my Maya scene a sec. Do some renders while we're chatting. Uh, what do you guys think about about the changes so far? All right, pretty cool, not cool. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? Like, though the changes and why I'm doing them, and does, do they make sense? But yeah, I just wanted to play around with like, what would that look like if uh, he had his mouth open? But 
kind of don't like it. But, you know, it's worth exploring. That's the whole point of why we're doing this, right? To kind of explore and figure out, like, this is working, this is not working. All that type of stuff. Let's make sure we're all there. It looks like there's something wrong with the chat. But that's... Uh around with adding some so let's open up this render window down here so you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about wait wait Hey Raj, how's it going? Let's see, should be kicking off the render anytime soon. There we go. So I think it's pretty important to, at this stage, even though I'm still blocking out everything, you know, still not final at all, it's a good idea to kind of start blocking out like the like what it's going to look like with different lighting conditions because there might be details that we're overlooking or overthinking that. I think are probably pretty important to just play around with and if, with this we could kind of see like is this working is this not working let's, see, let's optimize this render make it a little quicker But here I can play with the environment and see, you know, I feel like overall, like, see here, like his, uh, his lower jaw, like the back of his jaw feels okay. But I think in the 3D model, it looks, something's off about it. And I think that's a, that's going to be a big issue. Uh, let's, let's change something real quick. Speed this up. See, but if we start playing around with the lighting, you kind of see here that there's, yeah, it's way, it's too deep. The way the lighting's falling on that, it feels like he has no real way of chewing or anything like that. So, I think we're gonna we're gonna play around with that. But it's pretty cool to be able to see this, uh, you know, kind of with real life environment, so you can. You know, if you print it out, this is kind of what it's going to look like. Here I see also that the eyes are kind of getting too blocked away with this brow part. So I need to kind of either break that into two or start playing around with some of that detail. But as you can see, the render resolve, you can see, you know, also like if there's too much surface noise or if there's more detail needed there. Um, what do you guys think? So definitely this area feels feels like it needs some work but that's the whole point right we're here to to see what this is looking like and how we can improve it so I added a little bit of subsurface because I noticed in uh, some of the <laughs> Ew, Maya yeah I know Maya's uh, not for everybody you should do a lot of my test renders in Keyshot or um, Oh, th thank you. Th thanks for thanks for joining the stream. Thanks for like hanging out, because uh, you know, so it's easier for me to sometimes get lost in this. But it's good if people ask questions; it might get my mind working in a different way. Um, or also get your guys' opinion, you know, because uh, I may get too stuck on, on what I'm doing and then not really. Uh, it could it could look better. So here's some of the stuff that I was talking about. Like, see this this became too, too flat. So this is where I recommend using like the move tool, but also changing this down to like the eight to 15. Yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the lessons. Hopefully the, you guys guys could implement this into your designs. Um, 
um, started working on some bigger projects or kind of just um, have you guys see what the workflow is like, you know, for designing some of these guys and you could design your own. So at this point, there's also like I'm inserting a couple tools so I could also use the move topological. It might make it easier to do a few, a few things. Like this, you know, like if I were to move that separately, it'd probably look, uh, probably not work to get not work well with the move tool. But this is what I'm talking about. This feels like it's too flat. So we need to push some of this stuff out. But also maintaining some curvature around some of these areas. Let's see if this guy get too, uh, too heavy. Yeah, it's a little heavy. So this is the part I was talking about. This is starting to become like we need to make the eye a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. For the, the nice thing is that you, this is all streamable, right? So you can check it out later if you guys can't make it. Uh, I know the Sunday morning is a little bit of a... Uh, people are probably out partying or having fun. And now we're, uh, are sleeping. <laughs> or you might be in a completely different time zone where... Uh, where it's about, to, it's about to be time to go to sleep. Find something a little more epic. This music is a little too, too slow. You guys agree? Let's see. Yeah, one thing that I forgot to do uh, a couple of weeks ago is uh, print out that helmet we did on the previous stream. So I think uh, I'll probably be setting up that soon and uh, probably record it if you guys want to see how it's prepared to be printed uh, life size. That's if you guys are interested. See, so now we're gonna break this up. This we're gonna add a little bit of ridge here. Separate that out and then seems like there's a little bit of uh so I use clay a lot to to get rid of these little bumpies that are kind of like wobbly surfaces. See like here everything. So if you just hit it like really really low, you can start smoothing some of those things out and getting rid of some of those artifacts that are that were being caused by either the move tool or some kind of other tool. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Let's see how that Maya render went. Oh, I stopped it, I guess. But yeah, it's kind of what we're dealing with, you know. Let's uh, turn off the background. Oh, is there a way to get a longer student license? 
I want to say no. I think 30 days is probably good. Maybe 60 days might be nice. But uh, at the, at this point, I don't know. You might have to contact uh, Pixel Logic themselves. Um, but I think it's totally worth it. You know, like what you can do with this program, even if you just get the indie license or the, uh, I guess, a uh, monthly license. Uh, I think it's really good for you to keep on this. You know, instead of moving to other sculpting packages, that way you get more immersed in this. You know, and like really like put it to the to the test. the resolution to make this a little faster there we go that should be faster a little smaller is this blender no this is a uh, maya and uh zbrush so this is a pixel logic stream so this is all about zbrush but i'm kind of showing you how i go about test rendering some of these uh models that i'm doing at the moment just to see what they look like with the real environment uh real lighting you know, like some of the stuff we were just talking about is uh, the brow and the, and the cheekbone or the or the lower jaw. But you guys can see here, it's overall pretty good. These renders aren't the fastest, you know, but uh, they're also pretty large, so I need to maybe need to shrink them down to even smaller. But it's good enough to see to see what's going on with this guy. But let's see. Let's see what we can do with this. So one thing I wanted to do today, maybe explore some poly painting. What do you guys think? Kind of looking at, at this guy for reference for the poly painting. This kind of brown, grayish, kind of uh, a little bit of brown um, patterns. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I, at the beginning, I was thinking of doing something that's just like black. With this uh, highlights of blue but i feel like all the black kind of makes everything kind of disappear hey how's it going doug uh would kind of make everything disappear and it, and it feels kind of generic uh, so i think we're gonna kind of skip the black but go with uh somewhere in between this guy and the real uh insect kind of this brownish dark brown with light hints of lighter brown but i kind of really like um where's this guy uh, this guy here so I think we're probably gonna attempt something like that maybe do something some spots on the eyes like that too what do you guys think uh, this is mostly for concept so for your own 3d prints or if you're doing some quick concepts for uh, like for a film or commercial and you need to do some quick renders that's kind of what this workflow is more this is not production at all because uh, it's, you know production requires a lot of retopology cleanup of UVs and all that stuff and that's what I do on my my regular day job which is fun but um i like doing this as an extra thing just to do more um you know just to change it up a bit now i tend to use a lot of substance painter uh to do a lot of my renders and then do some material stuff but uh we'll, we'll get to that stage eventually with this guy once the design feels a little more um like finish because right now it still feels very uh there's still areas where like it doesn't it's not it's not quite there So I think what happened with a lot of these shapes is they got a lot, they got pretty flat, which some place areas should be flat, but I want to add a little more dim, uh, dimension to this, to this stuff. So I'm going to uh, start playing around with adding a little more roundness instead of just everything being flat. But of course, you always have to check all your angles. That's the most important thing. You got to keep keep moving around. Even with this light, you kind of see what's going on. Like if you go back to this. But I like to play around with these shaders and see, you know, just kind of different. Different ways of kind of uh, illustrating your character. Because under different lighting conditions, it'll show different things. Specifically, like this part was super flat. So now we're adding a bit. We're probably going to add a little more of this in a broader sense and also adding a bit of a highlight on on the cheek see that makes him feel like his jaw is way stronger right where am i from i'm from los angeles i'm in the i'm in la um but my parents are, are mexican so i speak spanish as well i was uh, considering doing like half spanish half uh, english uh, uh, streaming but um i'm not sure how many people would be actually be interested in that or not since there's already a few streamers that, that kind of do that 
Where's where mostly are you guys from? <laughs> yeah, Doug. <laughs> hey, Roger, you're from Mexico. Okay, awesome. Let's see. Let's, add, let's keep adding some more details. So we're, we're probably going to concentrate a little bit on the face today, and we'll probably go on to the spider face too, because that's one that that's that's going to be fun for me to to sculpt. I hardly ever sculpt spiders, so especially spider creatures. So that's that should be fun. So we're kind of breaking a lot of these surfaces up. See how flat that looks? Like it feels cut out, but it feels very, very flat. And that's one thing. Those are the type of things we want to take care of today. Uh, right now, it's just it's a little dense, you know, a little more, not too crazy, but it's like a 256 uh, dynamish. So it's not like super dense, but uh, it's starting to get a little bit on the heavy side. So eventually, once I change a lot of this stuff, I'll zero remesh it so I have more resolutions. Yeah, yeah. I'll let Pixel Logic know, see if there's interest in uh, Spanish as well. Spanish streaming. Argentina, huh, Carlos? Thanks for joining us from Argentina, Liverpool. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's great to know there's people around the world checking this stuff out and you know uh tuning in for this for for checking out the stream which is really cool so you see we're starting to break down the surface so it didn't feel it was so flat before you know like that to that so i guess this is where we start to figure out how we're going to integrate this guy If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Jamaica, that's awesome. Kansas City, all right. Cool. A lot of you guys professionals are just trying to get into this or, or want to uh, start exploring the, your own ideas. Because that's kind of what I'm doing this for, to kind of show you guys how I go about doing this for shows and making up your own stuff, 3D printing it yourself. And, you know, I do this for myself, but hopefully you guys like it, which... Uh, it's, it's a cool an extra added thing but you know I would still be doing the same stuff if I was uh, not in the industry and doing other things there you go that feels like it's starting to get integrated but maybe we need a little bit of space so a little bit uh, some of the stuff that I'm also thinking about as I'm doing this is how am I going to 3d print this right because yeah, you can make anything you want, but then you have to make it 3D printable. So I'm already thinking about like this this horn or this this little antenna type of thing. I'm gonna print it. I'm gonna print it out. So it'll be nice to kind of separate it out so I can key it in. So that way, when I print, I have less cleanup here, and I could orientate it in a way where like it won't um, kind of give me a lot of issues for casting or or if I wanted to make more than one copy. So if I if I keep it separated and I keep it kind of like where a key where there's a natural seam, then that would that helps a lot. Oh, awesome! That no, that's good to know because uh, this is the type of feedback I need, you know. Because you might be like, well, why is he doing that now? Well, it's because I'm I'm thinking about the the all the all the issues that might come up when I'm printing, especially after printing so many, uh, you know, a lot of characters. I notice like, oh, that should design that differently. Or in this case, um, that's weird why I zoomed in. Uh, like thickness of some of these things, you know? Like sometimes you have to over thicken them just to, or, or have them taper in a nicer way, even though you might want them thinner. Like this stuff becomes so thin. You see that that was becoming real thin. <laughs> kind of looking at it from different angles, maybe give it a little more thickness on this side. Because a lot of the stuff tolerances sometimes are, are a bit of an issue, you know. But of course, want to make this still pointy, so there's no reason we we can't make it pointy. It just uh, you have to have a little more, 
you know, like there you go. We still it's still pointing, still feels uh, menacing, but it's it's like um, it's printer safe, uh, I guess. And you can still give a hint of more detail. This is just like our base shape we're gonna do right now. So here I'm trying to like just make it less boring and add a little bit more visual interest so it breaks up that surface. <laughs> See, just, just adding those little lines and then you can smooth them out, kind of helps. Here I feel like this needs to be a little more curved, so that's why it's really important. I tend to work with perspective off. And I, I check my stuff with perspective on, but I tend to kind of keep it off for most of my workflow. So here I feel like this needs to be curved, right? So we're going to add a little bit of curvature. Uh, what type of printer? I'm thinking of printing this in the, the form too. So SLA. Uh, but I might do a test uh, with with my uh, what is it my race 3D. Yeah, yeah, like all the overhangs, right? Because there's so many overhangs here happening. So if I print this separately, then I, I could adjust for those overhangs so they're not like in the way of of like the eyeball because they need some support or that type of stuff, right? So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Like, how can I separate that out? How can I say? Am I gonna have to break that other horn out, or or is this the perfect natural seam with this curvature part? You know, uh, you know, things like that were like for the back of the, this helmet uh, or the, the back of the protective shield type of stuff. Do I print those separate? Because there was a time where I printed something um, and it, it, it became a problem because it became so thin. Let me see if I if I have that. Let me let me grab it real quick. So here's an old one, an old print that I did. Uh, let me see, switch to camera mode. One second. Uh, I printed this so um, so thin that that had like the samurai uh, same type of deal. Uh, it's so thin that it, it made the mold very fragile. So what I'm thinking of doing is like, uh, if I could print those separate. Or if I could print them thicker with a with a taper, that would help a lot, you know. Especially like I was able to print this stuff and, and cast and mold like all the little spikes, but these became kind of an issue. So I will make them slightly thicker, thicker base, you know, uh, because they be, then you start getting bubbles, uh, that type of stuff, and that that becomes an issue when you're trying to make you know like 50 copies. Uh, the mold tends to die a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys are interested on the key, and yeah, I could definitely show that as well. I just didn't know if that was too boring or somebody, you know, if you guys don't care about that. But if you guys are definitely interested, I, um, I would cover that. That's not a big deal. That way I could make sure that you guys, you know, you guys get the most out of this as well. So here I'm just kind of defining different areas, right? Like uh, smooth areas to. to like uh, different transitions. So here you kind of see like what, you know, what we started with now, we're now starting to look a little more, uh, I want to say a little more organic, but then I also break some of these stuff up, you know, just to, just to give you a better idea of like what, what might be stuff that moves, like his, obviously his mouth moves or opens up. Yeah, so I want to make sure that that feels rigid compared to, or feels soft compared to the chin. Uh, yeah, I sell this stuff on, on La Bestia Studio, or I sell these. Uh, I sell most of my stuff on um, at the shows, like Monster Palooza and stuff like that. But I'm am gonna keep I'm gonna try to update my uh, an Etsy shop and LaBestiaStudios.com. Uh, That's kind of where I sell most of my stuff online, and and also like Instagram. Let's see. Let's uh, let's see what we can do about adding a little bit of a chin, chin thing.
So here's kind of what I'm talking about, because this stuff reads pretty well in real life when you have the change of direction like that. So that's kind of what I'm trying to implement here, where like we're breaking up those primary shapes now to a little bit more secondary shapes to, to kind of help give this look more detail. You see like here it's starting to feel very flat. That's where I'll start just rounding that off a little bit more to give it a little more dimension, maybe a little bit here too. see what happens if we remove those guys see I think those guys are what do you guys think I think they're pretty needed to, to break that horn up because that horn looks cool but let's see where those guys go let's see what we can do with this this looks kind of cool as well let me see I just covered up the chat Yeah, yeah, let me put a link to my site here. Um, so this has a link to my Instagram, my site, and my, my Gumroad. So check those out. Yeah, yeah, this is what it's all about, right? Giving back to you guys. And, like, I, I've been there where I wanted to know different workflows. And I still study different workflows uh, from different professionals, even though I'm a professional as well. Because you never, you never stop... Uh, learning different things you know different techniques that could save you lots of time so i would highly recommend you guys continue to learn no matter what uh do i mow my own stuff and yeah i used to but now that i have uh, kids and i have a a baby it makes it a lot harder for me to do that stuff so sometimes if it's not a, a two-part mold or something simple then i'll uh, i'll just hire somebody somebody that can do it way faster that's a professional at it but also that comes with a cost, right? So if you wanted to keep it cost efficient, sometimes it's better for you to do it yourself, which I would recommend if you're starting off, like at least go through the process so that you know like what, what it takes um, just to try that out. But, you know, it's up to you also time or space or equipment, you know, because sometimes it takes a while for you to kind of gather that equipment. So like a pressure pot and, uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, Or you don't have the space. I think that's that's one of the biggest issues, the space issue, you know? A lot of people don't have the, the space to do it because all this stuff requires space and, and it has to be clean. Um, but yeah, during the holidays, I'm thinking of uh, streaming on my own channel at, at uh, on Twitch in between these sessions, in between this one and the other... Uh, in the next session so if you guys want to follow me there i'll probably be streaming some of this stuff or some of the stuff that i do on oculus and bringing it to zbrush or even some of the stuff that i'm doing on the ipad and bringing that to zbrush uh, so you guys could check that out if you guys want see so that's one thing we didn't work on too much we didn't work on the back but that's we'll do a little bit of that now The good thing about checking other people's workflows is sometimes you um, you might be doing exactly the same thing, just maybe slightly different. But if you check out somebody else's workflow, you might actually learn some new stuff or, or you might uh, start blending different techniques, you know, uh, stuff that you already do with other things that you might uh, be able to to learn or apply to your workflow or change your pipeline around depending if you're doing concept or you're doing uh, whatever you may be doing, you know. Yes, the, the curing, you know, putting in alcohol baths, making sure that it's, uh, let me save before we lose any of this stuff. Um, the UV, the UV light curing, there's, there's a lot of things that you need space for. So that uh, if Sometimes if you get an SLA printer, you don't think about it because you're just thinking printer, but there's also other things you need to have near it and make sure that area is clean because that stuff gets everywhere. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be touching your computer when you're doing that because then it's, you won't be able to cure it things like that you know that are, that are you know or, or if you have kids uh, safety of them not touching any of that stuff because it, it could be it's pretty toxic and 
they could become allergic to it. So there's a lot of different factors, you know, or the smell of it. I think one of the biggest ones is the smell. Uh, the smell of some of this stuff, uh, some of the resins, it's, it's kind of pretty bad. So that's another thing to consider. That I know a lot of people, I guess you don't think about it because nobody talks about it. Yeah, we're getting rid of this bit of weird lumpy things back here to add some more def defining oh, I was in the wrong tool I was like it's not smoothing out but yeah this is kind of just to show you guys that you know even professionals make mistakes we all make mistakes but the what I guess the difference between a professional and just somebody just doing this is that you just move past the, the mistake, you know? You make a mistake, you try some stuff out, and you just move on. Where, like, I think when you're starting off or you, or you don't know enough, you kind of tend to just, like, I guess, uh, one, one expression I heard is, uh, kill your babies, right? Which is sounds kind of bad. But um, what's nice about it is that you hold something so precious, you don't want to change it, right? And you, you kind of need to. You, you need to be able to kill whatever baby you just made and make it better make a better baby uh, because if not you'll never move forward you won't know like what the sacrifice is and uh, how much better it could have been if you would just you would have just moved on and that's i think one pretty important thing to consider uh not killing your real babies but killing uh you know your creations like you, you saw how i changed a lot of this stuff um in the past streams and yeah sometimes it's for the best sometimes it's not but at least we're we're moving forward in the, in the whole process of this you know so i want him to be kind of smart so he should have some kind of a he should have a brain in the back of a skull so i'm trying to block that out and probably blend this with that with that other piece so let's uh just move it up and then make sure this guy's all the way up as well and we can merge down. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, personal struggles. You know, we all have that. Me, me after after um, eighteen years of doing this in VFX and working on this stuff, I still have the same type of struggles. You know, um, we all we all have them. So it's not a See, do I have groups on? Yes. I think I'm going to split these guys out. Uh, the struggles never stop. That's one. That's a good and a bad thing, right? Um, but something that you got to kind of get used to. Let's see. Let's see. Split. Split mast. All right. So now we can, uh, so the one thing that I have on is groups on Dynamesh, which uh, if you look at this, it's actually not blending those two pieces, uh, right? But if I turn that off and now I do Dynamesh, you'll see those guys blend together into one mesh. Uh, and for some reason, sometimes I need it to be separate, sometimes I don't. In this case, um, I kind of... I kind of need, I didn't need, I don't want these guys in there because I'm not sure if I want to keep them or not. Like, they add a little bit of visual interest to him, but it also kind of a bit distracting. So I kind of uh, separate those guys, but I want to make sure that this part of the skull or part of his, yeah, part of his exoskeleton feels like it's blended in. Like, it's not just, it just didn't come out of nowhere. So that means we have to implement this, uh, you know, this, this edge that's kind of coming out. Let's see. into part of his like uh, skull right so that it feels like it's actually part of it and not just like an insert like what we literally like what we just did Let's see any more questions yeah, a lot of this stuff holds you back if you don't just, like I was saying, kill your babies and move on and destroy your stuff and, and re reapply it. Always save a copy, of course. It just, I mean, like, 
feel free to experiment you know like don't be scared that's the whole point as you're learning experiment as much as you can because when you're a professional or when you're at the job you won't have time to experiment so it's it's good for you to just do that on your own yeah yeah it's nice that's that's the reason i watch other professionals i check out the other streams like uh like there's a lot of other people that stream that have really good different types of streams for 3d printing or um or just design or how to make cartoony characters and you know even though i don't cartoon i don't do cartoony characters as much i still watch those because they're still useful for in case i have to do one you know i have in the past done some like when i did some nintendo projects um it was cool to do those because then you kind of see like what's the balance right of of how much cartoony versus realistic if you're trying to blend things uh so it's all this stuff is useful at the end eventually you'll use it yeah i know so, yeah no I'll, I'll source it locally like uh like i find like uh, i have a few friends uh that do stuff in china uh i could do it if i did bigger runs but most of my runs are like probably 50 tops if that um they're pretty small runs but yeah, I think if I were to go bigger, then yeah, maybe China would be a, a better a, a better alternative, you know. Maybe one day. Since this is not what I do, uh, I guess as my regular day job, uh, this is just stuff I do for fun. I try to keep it local and just fun. But maybe you never know. One of my designs might be a, a hit that people like. It might be might be worth uh, exploring say to China uh, I'll break symmetry eventually but right now since we're still working on design like I, I was thinking of adding like some kind of scar or like maybe part of his uh, cheekbone or, or face broke off or maybe even one of the antennas since he was fighting this you know he's, he's gonna be fighting this giant um, spider dude which he cut it like the idea is that he cut his head off and kill them with his weapon so i need to design a weapon as well um and i was thinking of having him like either sitting down kind of like he just stabbed them in the eye and chopped his head off or something so uh i wanted to block out that body and kind of have him laying down and then uh him sitting on top of this head like i just killed this guy you know that's kind of the idea uh i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep this guy this big like he's a giant like oversized beast or if i'm gonna shrink him down to be more like maybe he's just slightly taller than him like an extra head or two like but we'll see i'm thinking giant head because then i could just print this as a giant piece uh kind of laying down sideways like he just died and then have him sitting on top i think that's that's kind of the idea that i kind of want to go with but oh that was nice so when that happens you just do a new document and i must have clicked on the shortcut for for edit on my pen somehow but that happens when you something gets stuck and then you just you're just drawing the model over and over not a big deal just create a new scene and then just redraw your tool and it keeps everything up to date where you had it but speaking of that let's let's continue to save yeah so eventually we'll post it as well let me see if i could find the pose that i was thinking of doing um here we go so this kind of something like in this style, like he's sitting on top of that giant spider guy. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but we'll see. So I, I'm going to block this price banner this, this session and then block it out, put them in the pose and then from then detail the rest of the, of the stuff. Like uh, maybe in, in detail all the, well, we worked the anatomy to, to be posed correctly and then like take one piece of armor and then mirror it over and move it manually. But this is kind of what I'm thinking, something like that. So it's important even at this stage to kind of think about those those things, you know, because uh, then that kind of might save you a lot of work. You might be detailing stuff that you're probably never going to see. Yeah, the China stuff, I, I don't know. It's, it's uh, you know, if you have large quantities, it's probably really good to go do it there, but... Like I was saying, I I don't do, I don't do a lot. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe if I if I do more shows or have a or people like my designs more, then maybe I'll do more stuff. But 
for now. For now, it's okay. Let's work on that back of the head. Let's get rid of all these. So one thing you guys want to do as soon as you guys can, whenever you guys are working in design, it's getting rid of these lumpy stuff, you know? Because it, may, it really is distracting, like all those primary shapes not being right, you know? Checking it from different angles. See, like you start finding lumps like this or like why is that lumpy if it's supposed to be like one big surface like they could be imperfections but not not those type of imperfections those are just like people being lazy or, or you're not re refining your shapes your primary shapes and sometimes you got to smooth them all out and then re, re sculpt some of this stuff you know and that's that's what I'm talking about just don't be scared to do that. Don't be scared to just push. Let's see what can we do here. So we're, we're here. We're having some weird issues here. So I'm going to start uh, adding clay. It's just the back of the neck. And then dynamesh it. Smooth that stuff out. So eventually this is just probably going to be just a head that I pop off, you know, like at the neck. Like maybe I print it with these things and they just key in. Uh, but at this point it's not there, right? So I'm still tweaking this stuff. You know, maybe then the opposite. Maybe I need to take those things out more. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying the stream, let me know uh, what you guys think of the pace and all that stuff. So far, I feel like it's been uh, pretty good overall in the last couple streams. But you guys tell me, you guys are the ones watching me. So let's see if we bring those things back. So one thing too, look at that silhouette too, right? Um, you guys can make this bigger. You guys can actually make it full size, but um, of course this is all about the silhouette. So we're kind of seeing how that's reading. I like that arch from the from the front to the back. That seems to be pretty good. So even looking at this now, I see a, I see more little lumpy surfaces that need to be kind of tweaked. At this point, I feel like that head feels okay. So one thing we're going to do is uh, duplicate it, right? Isolate it. Since it's starting to become kind of dense and then some of this stuff is easier to take care of in the lower subdivision. So one thing we're going to do is uh, uh, zero mesh it and project a little detail back on. Uh, what do you mean where you get this cap? Um. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why work it through the whole process, you know? Uh, you see now, like, it's good, but we need to reproject the detail because now we lost it, right? Um, so one thing we're going to do is turn off everything and then just turn on the other head. So we have both of them. And now we can go ahead and project all. That was fast, so we subdivide it one more time. Uh, let's project all. And one more time. And project all. So once you get to like a 
place where like you find your design to be like okay this is all i'm tweaking is just making the lips a little thicker or adding little things here and there then that's where you kind of want to z remesh the stuff so that you work in a more efficient mesh right what do i mean by that so see how much cleaner this is so now if i really wanted to tweak this look at how low res this is so if i wanted to smooth this whole thing out look at how fast it smooths out right and that's the that's the idea that you get to this point and now you could really remove all those little imperfections way easier um, like at this really low res level or if I wanted to kind of tweak this like it's much more manageable with any move tool or any any tool at all in general you know so then from there now they reproject the details back on now we could turn this guy off and uh, save before we do this save often save every 10 to 20 minutes all right so that's saved so now we can go ahead and get rid of this guy because obviously we don't we don't need it anymore and that's our old dynamesh that was uh, starting to get super dense because um, if you keep it in here it's going to start making your files kind of big so you kind of want to you kind of want to get rid of it but now we have this with subdivisions so we wanted to tweak some stuff we, we can or if I wanted to like even do major changes. Like one thing that I'm thinking about is. Giving this a little more heft. Or let's see, we also have to find those other little things that I lost. This guy's. I also have my let's see this guy on let's turn that guy off and the one with the mouth open that I didn't like so now that we know we didn't like it we can definitely get rid of it <laughs> kind of like that idea of the mask part but I might have to redo that in a different way there we go and this thing we didn't like it, start, it started to make it feel she didn't feel right, so that's all good. I guess we have some old pieces here as well. Sometimes you have to go and clean your scene up, <laughs> but at this point, we're just working on the head. We're going to work on these guys here. Um, how can we get those guys to look much, I guess, much more elegant and It also makes sense, right? <laughs> but I like this because it kind of break down, break that giant horn up. I think it's it's a cool design. Uh, maybe one thing we can do is it's curl it around a little more. And this is where it gets kind of difficult, right? These guys are starting to get heavy and they're starting to shear. They're, like the topology the way we're pulling it is going like the different direction so this is where we can duplicate these guys nope. I delete duplicate you'd be amazed how many times that happens and you accidentally delete something and because these guys are super still on their basic form we can uh, just kind of remesh them now and, and they're probably be much cleaner and easier to adjust and if we smooth them they'll take care of themselves since there's no detail really it's just like a duplicate of, of the same piece and now we can also play around with making making them thicker so there's a variation so it's not like a like a ribbon it's like a it goes from thick to thin <laughs> side effects hey how's it going where's uh where's everybody from where are you from side effects Or some of the other guys, if you guys haven't posted where you guys are from, it would be nice to to know. So here I want this to kind of... We'll figure out how to blend that in. Because right now it kind of doesn't make sense. 
So here we're kind of wrapping this stuff around. The exoskeleton horn. See now there's... See the more you move around the more you notice that there's like some stuff like some of the design stuff that I did makes sense but here I want to add a little bit of curvature so it doesn't feel just an extrusion. But also I don't want to go back to having it be just all the way in like it was. So the main thing is, I guess the main takeaway from some of this stuff is to keep moving around and you might jump around in your design. So I might be working on these things, but if I see something wrong, jump around and fix that if you, if you see something that really bothers you. Nice. Darksiders Genesis. Cool. I never played that uh, Darksiders. I think I have the art of, and I haven't even looked at it. I bought it a couple years ago, so I might have to check that out. Well, texture on surface, like, uh, you mean like, let's see, let's pretend this is cloth, right? Let's, let's save this one more time. I also added a little bit more lighting so that you guys can see me better. What do you guys think? Does it work? Is, is that better or is it actually not, not that good? I have this ring light laying around and I was like, oh, why not just plug it in so I'm actually lit better. Cause I don't want you to see the giant mess behind me. So all kinds of random computer things and printers and stuff. Um, so are you talking about like adding surface noise, like like not uh, like a butt map, but more. Um, let's see. Let's see if you can find something that's cloth. Um, this one's kind of cloth, but it looks ugly. Maybe that one is the best one to use. Well, that kind of works. Uh, let's use that as an example. So the nice thing about noise is that sometimes it has color. Sometimes you want it to have color. Sometimes you don't. You know. Um, let's see. We can get rid of the color. <laughs> I like to do this with UVs, but this this kind of works as well. So let's see what that looks like. More controlled. I guess, I guess you could also bring a pattern in and then put it as an alpha or something like that. And then from there, put in a layer and adjust it. But this, this seems to work okay. So if we had UVs, it would probably be much nicer, which I guess we could try that now. Uh, let's turn off that noise. And see, let's just put some some UVs on. Oh, actually, one thing that I tend to do, that I would recommend you guys do, is that this is kind of dense, just like we were talking about earlier. Uh, so at this point, it's a good time to Z remesh it, because you really don't want to UV anything that's really dense. And there's not much detail on this, so if we smooth it once or twice, it should look almost the same. almost done cool see much cleaner cleaner topology so now we go to make some UVs then right now we see the morph UVs off so as soon as these guys are there it should be able to turn on then we can see what those UVs look like so those are that's pretty clean you know for automatic free UVs this is great So let's see if we put the noise on now. What does that look like? Oh, still, oh, I need to change that to, I think, uh, UVs. Oh, it's not working, huh? Oh, it, it is. It just need to go back. Now we could change the size of this stuff. Uh, I 
might be a little too small, but let's try that. But yeah, this, so we need to divide this a few times to be able to apply it to mesh. And it didn't like it. Great. There we go. Now it's starting to show up. So I think we might need to go even higher than that because it's too low. Let's go to two. Oh, there we go. So it might be better to look at this way. Which is weird because usually you could apply it and it shows up a lot stronger. There we go. So, you know, that's pretty easy for you to actually create some of this detail. This is obviously way too pushed out, but uh, if you do this in layers, you can also just tone it down. Let's try that. There we go. That looks much nicer. Yeah, yeah, so that actually has bump, and then now it's a real piece of 3D geometry, which is pretty awesome, right? Because now, check that out. That's uh, Now you could 3D print this, and it will actually look like this. Of course, you need to make sure there's enough geometry to support this. At this point, you see how there's, like, if you, you could smooth it out, so you could do that as well. But you start, it starts to get soft. Uh, but if you had, like, say, one level of geometry, and then you did overall, um, like, deformations polished by feature or let's do edge so if we look at see now that actually looks so that's like a texture that I could actually work and this looks pretty good then you do a trim around that and then that makes it feel like it's weaved but obviously it probably wouldn't work for this guy because he is why would he weave his own stuff if that's supposed to be a piece of a shell but I hope that I hope that helped to kind of illustrate the, what you were asking for. Yeah, you should uh, you should play around with this stuff. There's so many presets in there as well, and noise, so it's pretty cool. Or you can go make your own noise pattern and bring it in as an image. Uh, layers. Uh no, you have to pick out. You have. You probably have to pick out the geo, uh, in the displacement of the normal map. So I will probably try, try to do that if, if possible. Yeah, yeah. So it uses the same poly count. It just kind of there's there's a different there's like polish polish by feature. So let's see. Actually, if we, let's go back to that. Uh, let's go one step back. Um, so depending on which one you're doing, if you just did polish, it might get a, it might get rid of way too much detail. But we'll find out right now. Where it might just make it look like little round circles. Also depends on how dense your mesh is. That's how long it's gonna take. So obviously it's it's a little time consuming. And like the different types, like one of them keeps like the edges crisp. The other one tries to, uh, I guess like just smooth everything out so it's like a nice surface so you see here they got more pillowy and round which sometimes is what you need but sometimes you want to keep it nice and sharp and that's what you would do like polish by by edge but you don't always have to go to 100 you could probably just do 10 and that might be good enough to see that that helped so now it doesn't feel so jagged right so we're getting rid of those little jaggies by just 
Just put in that, but you see it's, it didn't get rid of any of the detail. Yeah, so so what I would do is apply this on the on the layer, you know, like make a literally make a new layer, apply it, and then you could tone it down to like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, and then you could change the, the amount. So if you decide to export it out and it's not too much, you come back down and change it. Yeah, yeah, so it tries to maintain the edges, right? But it depends which one you're using. So it's like if you have a big like car surface or like this guy's antennas or something and wanted to run that, it might get rid of way too much detail or it might just refine the detail in between. So it's good to play around with the different types. Um, the nice thing is they added so many more in the last couple years um, that a lot of people don't use. You can also use the brush individually, but this is much nicer to use it as a as an overall like piece, right? Like you're just putting it on one piece and then running it. And then if you have other pieces similar, you could always just go back and run it. Um, but I tend to do uh, polished crisp edges or um, polished by feature because it depends what features you have you want to keep and it tries to keep those. So let's see what that does if we do polished by feature. See, like that that worked out much better. Like some of the edges don't don't have that jagginess that we had before in, in a previous version. See, like this stuff. That's what I like. That's really nice to have that history to go back. So sometimes you could just run like, even like at a level five. You see, now there's a little bit of waviness, so you might want to get rid of that. But you can play around with that. Let's make that a sixteen. See, so now it's almost gone. And some of those things, if you look at the profile and the, and the silhouette, it's, it's keeping that silhouette, but it's rounding everything in between. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the same type of deal, like the, the different types, yeah. Uh, like when you're saying uh, export layers... Uh, you mean like, uh, like, can you give me an example? Yeah, yeah, you could, you, I guess, yeah, that's what, I guess you could flatten the layers and then that bakes it into the mesh or you don't even have to flatten it. You could just export whatever you see on the screen it will export back out. So you don't have to technically bake them, but it's a nice idea. One, one issue that I had before is that sometimes where you're creating displacements and you have a lot of layers, it's good to bake them just to bake the displacement and then make sure you have a file that it doesn't because it'll take everything into account. Uh, where sometimes it, it they might might skip one layer. I had that issue, but it, it's rare as well. But yeah, that's a cool way to add to add some detail like really quick. But yeah, for three D printing, just flatten them down and you're good to go. Hope that helped. Uh, but yeah, it's a really cool, cool way. I, I before I used to do everything with a lot of brushes, but now I tend to use deformations a lot, uh, just because it's such a global thing. Or you can even mask things and then just run it, uh, which is really nice. So that's kind of how I get those things to uncurl. So you saw they had like a their own curl, which which is fine, but I kind of wanted to kind of clean them up, and I wanted to kind of follow the curvature that's going on here. So I kind of want it to be like a nice S curve. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. So now we're losing the bottom one a bit. So I kind of want to use uh, move topological to get that guy back and not mess with the top one. Because it's nice to have that offset. Just adds a little bit more to the design. See, so it's coming out of this side, but then tucking in.
it's just a slight little curve, but to me it makes a huge difference, you know. Here we're going to fix it from the front so it's not just penetrating through. But I kind of want it to be kind of like it's wrapping around. I think that's working. And constantly keep changing shaders. I, I tend to do that a lot just to check things on the different <laughs> shaders. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, how to bake the layer. Yeah, I, could, I could definitely do that. Oh, I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Once, once, whatever you see on screen, that's that's what it's gonna be, right? So I guess we can go back to this. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's see. Is this a, a clean one? That's good. So one thing I would do is create a layer, right? So now you have it on record. So now we can go to let's hide everything else. We can go to surface. Keep that surface we had, right? But it's not strong enough. So you want that. It's looking pretty good. Apply it. Right. Let's go a little stronger because that's not strong enough. So you go with that. Apply that. Cool. Looks kind of what you want. It's all good, right? So now we don't. We we'll no longer have the surface. Uh, so now we have the layer. Turn off record. See, it's all on the layer, right? I guess I didn't delete full history, but it's it's all good. So now you could put this like 0.5. If you think it's too strong, not strong enough. And then what you could do at the end is just uh, bake all. And now it's part of the mesh. So you're good to export it. But even if you don't bake those out, you still export. So, And it will look exactly like what you have in your viewport. What some people do too is uh, duplicate the layer, you know. And that will give you more and more and more and more. <laughs> we just keep doing that. So some people just do that. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's many ways to, to do this stuff, which is, I guess, really cool, right? Let's go to a few steps back on the history. Cool. So I think we're back to our low res version that we could just smooth and kind of get rid of all those those little details <laughs> hopefully that hopefully that helps lucky but it should yeah it should totally make sense because it's uh it's just a simple layer system like in photoshop you know but the nice thing is that you don't have to bake it down all the time you can just keep it Yeah, yeah, you could you could definitely hit decimate. Uh, decimate's uh, pretty important. That's kind of what I was doing in a lot of my my uh, test renders. I'll decimate and export to Maya or whatever so that it renders quicker and it's not as crazy high poly. And one thing you also want to consider is um, decimating for printing. Uh, so once you find happy and skills all set and everything's good, make a duplicate copy of your file and then just uh, decimate it because I'm just gonna make your file way smaller. I know a lot of the like form labs or a lot of those uh, programs that come with uh, for the printers have limitations on like over 150 megabytes it, it takes forever or it doesn't open or says it's corrupt so if you decimate it will bring that file size down and it will import and work fine just make sure when you decimate you uh, check for holes because uh, sometimes that creates little holes or there might be little artifacts that you need to check for but just keep an eye out for that I think that's working. Let's smooth it. I guess I, I don't want it to curl around this thing perfectly, like contour, you know? Because it makes it makes it feel like there's some weird dent. All right, awesome. Glad to help. 
Yeah, yeah, large files. It never, they never like playing correctly. So I, sometimes I, when I forget, or in the middle of the night, I want to print something, I forget to decimate it, and it's like it won't work. It's like oh, because I forgot to decimate it. So it's pretty important to decimate uh, as you're going. Guess we'll, we won't have them cross because it, it looks much better if they don't. So if you have any kinks, you could just hit smooth and see, it just works. Uh, any other questions? You guys are digging the way this is going, how it's looking. Play around with some colors now. Let's see what color do I want to make this. I always start with like a little bit of a beige. So one thing you can do is go to standard RGB and just paint, right? Or you can also go to draw and then um, to color and then uh, fill object. And that fills all the fills that object, so we can just go fill all these objects if you wanted to, right? So now we change this color. Only those objects are are that color. And we press uh, C and hover over. You see, hover over the the color you have. You could resample that color. So in case you lose your selection or any of that type of stuff, uh, at least you get it back to like the similar color that it was. So here we're gonna play around. Let's, let's change the color of all these two. And go back to C. All right, let's go back to this color. Cool. Let's smooth some of this stuff out. Because a lot of the painting is based on uh, the, the density of your polygons, so you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth, like the eyes, you need to have a level of smoothness. Smooth those guys, so now they're nice and nice and smooth, right? Because if we were to paint on them, they're going to be all pixelated, just like the topology was. So I have the Form 2, I have, um, this, I have two of these guys, um, the Slash, Slash and Slash Plus or whatever. I uh, have um, a CR10 and a Race 3D and 2 Plus. But I'm thinking of getting an Elegoo um, Mars just to test uh, some of the lower end stuff to see how good it is because these prices are going down and it's kind of ridiculous. You can get one of those printers that can print high quality stuff, maybe a small volume, but at 200 bucks, it's, it's a great price. The Form 2 has been great, but now that all these uh, competitors are popping up with, uh, see like here, I'm looking at this stuff and I'm seeing some kinks that I need to kind of clean up. And at this point too, this is probably a nice time to Z remesh this guy because he has a similar issue where like we can clean some of the stuff up uh, much quicker if we just Z remeshed it. Oh, thanks side effects. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to start updating hopefully my, my art station soon because uh, I've been neglecting it and I sh really should should update some of the stuff because people are like, well, what do you do? It's like, well, I do a lot of things, but, uh, you know, at least there you can go and I could physically describe what I'm actually doing. Uh, all right, so we lost the poly color on that, poly paint, so we're going to change that color, fill object, go back. So now we go. So let's see, we want to make the eyes kind of have some spotty stuff, right? Let's change this to...
I'm just looking at that bug reference that I have. So I'm not sure. There was a little bit of darker color in. Let's see, any more questions? Oh, nice. Yeah, the CR10s are, are decent printers, but you know, it depends how much tinkering you do. Uh, that, that That's gonna make a huge difference of like, uh, uh, that's gonna make a huge difference of like the type of stuff uh, you're gonna be able to print out, right? Because if you don't like tinkering, I feel like like for it, that's a good printer for people who like tinkering and, and know how to adjust things and, and uh, like a like the race through the it's like just ready to go and it's like like your Apple type of product right where yeah some things might be you have to change but overall is it's good to go so sometimes it's, it's you know it depends on which kind of person you are so I know some people that are more into this and that so let's make these guys uh, shiny Soft toy toy plastic, there we go. So, we're, so right now we're just painting material instead of painting. Uh, it's fine. I didn't spend much time painting this stuff. Yeah, exactly. If you like the detail, it, the SLA is the only way to go, or or L DRP as well. So I guess that overwrote my color. No big deal. Let's just uh, sample it again. But well, that happens. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. I was like, what happened to my symmetry? I don't know what happened to my music. Like, oh, you mean the silhouette? Like, where that's coming from? That's from uh, 2020. That's a new feature in 2020. Just like this guy for the directions, you know? For the... Like, how to figure out left, right, center. It, it's part of that as well. But if you click on there, you can make it bigger or smaller. So if it's in your way, you can always make it smaller. Uh, there's a way to turn it off, too. Uh, I don't remember where that's at at the moment. Um, but it is a, there's a, also a way to turn it off. See if we can figure that out. There was somewhere else. Uh, let's see. Well, I can't remember, but there's a way to turn it off if you wanted to, but just shrink it down. It's always good to have a silhouette so you can see what's what's going on. Let's go back to painting. Let's paint these more out of a gray pattern. And all this stuff is temporary too, so don't dwell on if it's perfect or not, because 
sometimes it's not going to be perfect or sometimes some of these guys need to be slightly bigger let's paint some more let's paint some more darkness So for the head, right? One thing that I like doing is uh, doing the masking. Do the masking. Uh, you could do cavity. So that masks a lot of my cavity, right? But so I just invert that mask, and then I could go with the darker color. And I could turn this off too to see. Let's change that cavity value. From here, I'm mostly painting on cavities. Oh, okay, thanks. On the preference thumbnails. The preferences thumbnails so you could turn those off there you go thanks so you could either make a shortcut or just keep it up there I, I'd rather just keep it up there um, just keep it small uh, the other thing is that you can make it also just not be a silhouette but that defeats the purpose because it's the same thing as what you have here um, No, you can't really do the, the noise on the low res model because it, it's not going to displace it correctly. What you could do is make a duplicate of your model, smooth it out, apply it, and then and then reproject that to a low res, like the, the mapping, and then that would kind of fake it. Uh, that, that could work that way. Well, what kind of... Uh, Anthony, what kind of... Um, prints are you going to be doing large prints or small prints because that's a big factor right i got the race 3 to be able to do helmet size type of stuff you know or like the stuff that i did in the previous stream um so it depends it depends on your on your needs Me, have you guys been watching The Mandalorian? It's it's pretty good. It's really inspiring. I, I don't know. I really dig it. So I'm not sure if you guys do or not. But it's pretty, pretty cool. So from here, let's try a different technique. Kind of like doing the, the, the dots and making this more of a darker brown situation.
Why do I make those eyes just black? Just for the time being. So one thing we can do is add some more saturation here. Let's pick that. Uh, I'm thinking this is like traditional, like painting airbrush type of stuff, you know? So, so what do you want to do is kind of just fill it and then we're going to go back with the highlights. do a quick pass on everything so while this music is getting epic oh, okay that's what you wanted to control yeah, well, you kind of just have to do it again. I would suggest just writing down the settings for the noise and then just trying it again. It's so easy and so fast. Or duplicate the piece and then have one that's blank in case you want to change it. Yeah, you have to subscribe to it. So that's the only thing that sucks. Because the rest of the stuff I'm not really interested in. But I have kids, so they watch, they watch a lot of cartoons. So maybe add a little more saturation or in all the cracks. That's where you could change the pattern to something else. Mass by something else, peaks and valleys. See, that gives us like a cool little pattern that then we could choose to paint the saturation into. We're gonna bring all this stuff down so it's not a big deal if it's overly saturated or. Or just a little bit break up.
Oh, 12 inch figures, then you definitely probably want to go with the with the form labs or Elegoo or one of those uh, resin printers because it's definitely going to make a huge difference. See, from here we're going to go lighter. So now we're going to go lighter. And you want that strong pattern. So we can go back to our peaks and valleys. Put some highlights only in those spots. So now we're doing the opposite. Instead of doing instead of trying to do the crevices, we're doing the opposite. It's like dry brushing technique. Let's get in there. only have 15 more minutes how's everybody doing this stuff seem fun to you guys or or what's going on anybody following along or doing anything on their own any of their own sculpts So it's cool that you could kind of see a little more details here, even if you change the shader around, you know, depending on what you want to do. I like the way that's looking too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> nice, a frog. Frogs are cool. I made one in VR to print out, uh, maybe bring it to ZBrush and t touch it up uh, like two months ago or something like that. Yes, so all the, U all the UBs are made here and then I take it to Substance and do a lot of this type of stuff in, in Substance. But in this case, you know, it's good to play around with this stuff. Maybe we'll detail the crap out of this guy now just so we so you guys can see kind of what I'm thinking about, like final detail or at least tertiary detail. Let's see. So, the other thing too is that if you guys don't. Don't want to see the deep don't want to see the paint you guys can do this as well which is sometimes easier to see the what you're doing but sometimes you kind of want to see it with the paint
So some of the things I wanted to add to this stuff is like using snake hook, find that profile. Let's see, we gotta turn off RGB. It's adding some variation to that to that to that guy, so it feels more like an insect. Uh, Paul, uh, I don't do a lot of fiber mesh here uh, at all, but um, maybe cover that in the next stream. Or um, I know there's a lot of other people that cover that type of stuff. Like Paul Gabriel probably covers that a lot on his his streams. I I don't do tend to do much. I do more X Gen type of situation type of stuff, but I'll just say check check their streams out for this. See, so I tend to overdo it and then s s just kind of hit it with the smooth so that so this was a comparison with a human scale, like what his scale is. You know, so let's move this guy down. So this guy's finding this guy, there's probably no way he's gonna win unless he has some crazy laser gun or something. <laughs> but that's kind of the idea, right? So the humans are a six foot guy. This guy's probably like 12 feet, nine, nine feet. And then he's fighting this giant spider dude. But we don't need this guy. Let's so make him go away. I prefer Substance Painter uh, just because it's way easier for me to do this. Like, it's almost instant. But if you want to get more organic feeling, kind of like what we're getting here, then it's probably better to do it here. Yeah, yeah, we could probably do... Um, probably We could probably cover that on my, on my personal stream. That I don't mind covering some of the X-Gen stuff there. I think that's fine. But yeah, this is kind of stuff I was talking about, adding these little little spikes or little little details that are gonna kinda of break that 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 secondary shape up, you know. Of course, remember it's gonna be printed, so you we don't want to make these guys super spiky uh, or super thin because then it's gonna be a, a bit of an issue. But that's kind of the detail I was talking about adding. I know it seems like a small, small thing, but it, it really does uh, change your design. Like it really adds a lot to it. Like, you see how that's that's. I feel I feel like that's adding a lot to even just that piece. You know, like refining these guys here, and then smoothing them in between, and then adding those little accents. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, little tips. So those are the type of things I want to add now that I'm, I've seen the design. But of course, I want to go through the whole model and do this, the, the same level of detail to everything, same level of paint job, and then add variations. Uh, like one thing that I want to do now is add a little bit of that. Like, let's change to the face. See, adding those to his face, but obviously they're. I think I forgot to turn off a mask or something. Yeah, I forgot to turn off that mask off. But adding those type of things to.
But yeah, those those little details I think go a long way. No, I'll show you guys probably that in the next stream because we're, we're not even at the keying stage, you know, and that's super easy to do. So, and once I have a key, I'll show you guys why and why I put it in certain places and how I have it. Yeah, yeah, so it's under, it should be under um, Twitch. Where are, you, where are you tuning from? Are you tuning in from Twitch? Okay, so that should... Let me look for it real quick so I can show you guys. How far away? I don't, oh, it's this way, right? How far away from the... Sorry about that. Let's, let's go to my profile. So that should be my my Twitch. So if you guys want to, you know, go on there, there should be some past videos in there, but uh, I guess they're gone. I haven't I haven't streamed in a while there. I, since I started streaming for Pixel Logic, I've been kind of busy. But uh, I'm gonna start hopefully in the, in the holidays. So feel free to check that out. Yeah, so that's kind of the stuff I was talking about adding this guy. You know, so that it. So let's add some. So you want to kind of keep the theme going with that stuff, you know. I, I will be teaching uh, that stuff, but it depends how many people are interested in it. Because if there's nobody interested, there's no point in doing it, you know. So maybe I'll take a, you know, check my check my um, Instagram and I'll probably do some, uh, what are they called? Um, posts there with some polls. So they if, what what are the topics that people want to, might, might want to learn? And then I'll probably put them on there. Oh, let me see your frog. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool, man. That's looking. Uh, what kind of frog is that? Like what? 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 Uh, species? It's nice. You could go to town with this stuff on on the detail, on all the all the little warts and all that stuff, which would be really fun to do. Your pain tree frog. Okay, cool. I think for mine, I was just doing a regular toad. Um, which, let me see if I can find it. I was just doing it just to practice in medium, just to try something different. Cause uh, I want to see how far I can push some of this stuff. Yeah, this is this is the one I was doing. But I decided to paint it in there as well, just to see. Start adding details. But I want to take it to ZBrush and kind of print it. Uh, maybe use it as a, a thing to put my wake up pen or something. But yeah, check those out if uh, you're on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to make mine like super fat, like... It's like one of those giant toes that you could barely hold. Like it's like holding two hamburgers together. Which is like, how can you even hunt or do anything when you're that big, you know? Let's see, what can we do here? What are some of the things that stack beetles have that uh, on their horns? 
their their horns are usually pretty round if you look at this reference that i'm kind of looking at that's kind of what i'm looking at but i want to add a little more visual interest See what other bugs do I have? Yeah, maybe adding more of this type of stuff they have in the legs, right? Like the little spikies, like that could be cool. Something more like that. What do you guys think? Yeah, it kind of works. Uh, you can, but it takes account into the into the low resolution. So if you have something that was low, it's probably better to uh, delete history or save it without history and then come back and, and clone it, and then you could use that. Because if you have all this history backed up to like when it or if it, to when it was low res, it will interpolate the highest detail you have now to that. So cool! Wow, it looks like we only so we only have two more minutes of. Uh, of this stuff. Well, what do you guys think so far of how this uh, this guy's turning out? We'll probably add some more black detail onto him, like from the back, like his, like uh, from yeah, I guess the back would be darker coming forward to this to this color. Uh, but of course, I don't want to spend a lot of this stuff time painting because it's just it's just for quick look, you know. Hey, what's up, Juan? How's it going, man? Thanks for joining. Yeah, working on this, uh, these uh, creatures, these creatures uh, that I did on the stream. This uh, samurai bug guy um, that we changed it from. You know, got that guy, and they have this guy. They were gonna kind of continue working on next stream. I guess a creature he's fighting. But we're just kind of going into into detail how we're doing all the all this stuff here for the for the paint. Let's see what it looks like without paint. So that's kind of what it looks like without paint. And that's with paint, so it can make a big difference. But I kind of like the way this is going. Let's see. Like, see the second little secondary details are starting to help. But it's nice to have like the large primary details, so it's not always like you have somewhere to look, not just like everything's noisy. But yeah, hopefully I can get it to this point. I can get the rest of the body to this point and then pose it. Uh, so he could be killing this guy next time. See, like I feel like now these guys are too much. Like maybe, maybe he just has one break, and that's it. See what it looks like with some perspective on. Quick render. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it looks like we're at our time. Uh, but thanks for everybody for joining. I really appreciate you guys kind of kind of showing up and hanging out with me in the stream. Uh, oh, thanks, man. Th thanks for. Okay, yeah, I, I run into a lot of you guys. Thanks for you know seeing you guys at the summit or other events. Make make sure you say hi. Uh, one thing that I'm going to try to do uh, whenever I go to other events, I'm probably going to be some stickers. So if you guys. Remind me, you guys are from the, you guys saw me in the stream or, or maybe I'll probably hook you up guys, hook you guys up with some stickers. So let me know. Oh, thanks, man. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, this guy's going to be printed, dude. So it's going to be printed as a full figure. So 
uh, of course pulls, but it's going to be on top of this guy. Kind of, he just finished killing his uh, giant spider demon thing. So that's the plan. Hopefully, in the next couple of streams, we can wrap it up and then have it printed uh, next year. Yeah, resin printer for sure to get all the detail because we're going to be adding a lot more detail than this. So this was just like the, I want to say probably secondary shapes. We're actually going to add a little more detail to break the surfaces up. But, you know, also experimenting with some of the paint jobs we potentially might do. But for now, that's where we're at. Oh, gracias, Carlos. All right, guys, that's my time for this week. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram or uh, wherever you guys uh, want to follow me. Uh, check out the streams on um, the Pixelogic channel. Talk to you guys soon.